I spent a lot of time and money and resources into studying the Big Bang Theory, which I used to believe in. And I'm very, that's like something I'm very interested in. And I just, the more I was reading about, it, the more I found issues with it. Um, like I, I bought into the idea that the cosmic microwave background radiation temperatures were evidence for the Big Bang Theory. But when you look into it, the temperatures predicted by the Big Bang theorists were way higher than the temperatures predicted before the Big Bang Theory. So basically, if I'm understanding this correctly, like you believe that the universe existed indefinitely into the past, but you don't agree that space time is expanding or has expanded. Like space time has been in a static state. Um, correct? Yeah, I don't believe that that um, redshift of galaxies is velocity. I don't believe that there's a metric of space time that's expanding. I don't believe that space or time is expanding. I just think that the it's static. It's it's not the universe is not changing size. But uh, we can observe this expansion through telescopes, though. Or do you disagree with that, or are you just saying that? Are are um... yeah, we definitely don't observe expansion according to the lambda CDM model, which is the concordance model, the standard version of Big Bang today. According to that theory that you guys are um, supporting today, right? According to that model, the what you just described is because of dark energy, correct? Yeah, so okay. dark energy is just the name that's given to whatever force it is that's causing the rate of expansion of the universe to increase. So we don't know what's causing that. Dark energy is just a sort of stand-in term that we use until if ever, right, right. scientists discover what that phenomenon is. Oh, well, they their model was wrong and it was falsified. So they made up a new one that requires inventing 92% of the universe with made up fictional stuff that defies the laws of physics. That's sort of a problem to me. I don't know, it's sort of a deal breaker for me. But What laws of physics does it defy? And also, why would we assume that the matter that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis is 100% of the universe? I see no logical reason to make that assumption. Neither do theists. I mean, you guys sound like creationists to me. You, I mean, you guys believe in creation. You believe that most of the universe is supernatural, exotic nope. matter. You guys are creationists. Nope. None of that is supernatural and none of that is creationism. I'd add Mr. Leo Phyllis. So uh, how, how are you doing, Leo? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm just interested in what laws of physics, the concepts of dark matter or dark energy uh, defy. All of them. Which ones? Let's start somewhere. Name one. It's pick any one and it defines. No, it. yeah, that's what I'm asking you to do. Name one. It's not. It doesn't exist. Like stuff has to exist. No, name name at least one law law of physics that is that is uh, violated or defied by either dark matter or dark energy. All right, let's let's. Look yeah, I didn't think so. I hate this guy. By the way, Age, I don't know why you're bringing this guy. How how dare you? <laughs> I mean, well, to, to be fair, I would hate I him too. The same question that Leo did uh, earlier, but I mean, the only response I just heard was that they have to exist. But like, you guys have never heard of that before that that dark energy and dark matter defies the laws of physics. Is that no. a new piece of information to you? But they're, but they're just placeholder terms for phenomena that we don't really know of yet. I don't see how they can be like disproving or contradicting anything. Like they're just like placeholder terms. And they also don't violate any known laws of physics. Well, okay. Well, so I was prepared to talk about CMB temperatures. If you want, I can um, go and provide some ev some evidence and some information on why I believe that. I mean, I've read a lot about it. I don't. I don't really believe in that stuff that you guys believe in. So I don't get that deep into like what exotic matter even is because it's. It, I don't believe in it. Why not? I mean, why don't I believe in it? It's yeah. Do you up. have any evidence that exotic matter, non-baryonic matter, is impossible or breaks the laws of physics? Or like, why do you not believe in it? What's your reason? Right. So you can ask me that about every single thing we talk about. But I'm well, saying you should have a reason to believe the things you believe, right? I mean, you should have rationales. Yeah, yeah. I do. Why don't you find it convincing that it's true, I guess? 
Like, but why? we're not okay. So are we here? Like, just change it to grilling me about my personal beliefs. Then, like, we're here to talk about the co the cosmic microwave background radiation. Well, you. I mean, the discussion has has gone to uh, dark matter because you started talking about that, and I, nobody's stopping you from talking about what you want to talk about. If you want to, and we t we. We're, we're bringing a fourth the person TV and TV earlier, so. talk shit and bringing a fifth person and have him talk shit and then just, you know, we're going to have a lot of just us versus them mentality of... Wait, like, I, I talked shit? Talking. Did I, I, I talk shit? I, don't I thought I, I just asked you a question and then you didn't answer it, even though you I made the that, claim. Right. That's, what, that's how I recall that going down. Well, you talked shit to me in the past. I don't really care about the past. This is now. Well, we're talking about the past. We're talking about the Big Bang Theory and predictions of the Big Bang Theory from the past. I mean, I, I think we've been fairly cordial. I mean, I nobody Leo is, has not attacking you, is what I'm saying. Well, he, he's a dick. That's why. I mean, he get, he gets very passionate about science because I think he gets offended when people uh, say that science or cosmology or different fields of science aren't true and they don't really have a good reason for why they doubt it or disagree with it oh i gave a lot of really good reasons and i'm not saying that cosmology isn't true i'm saying that the um creationist version that you guys believe in is not true like I don't, well i don't believe the universe was created i don't i don't even think that's a coherent concept so i don't know how i could be a creationist in any meaning of the word i'm not talking to Leo. the the overwhelming uh the 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 overarching majority theory in cosmology right now that's accepted is Big Bang cosmology. That's what the uh, astrophysicists and cosmologists agree on. That's the scientific consensus. So, right. That doesn't prove anything, though. Just I'm not saying, not well, I'm not saying that it does. I'm just saying that uh, people who are educated, a lot more educated than me in these fields, the fact that most of them agree on this, I find that convincing to where I'm going to defer to them and say, these people probably know what they're talking about. So it's more likely that they're going to be right than that it's all bullshit and made up. Or at the very least, it would require strong evidence to the contrary to, to disprove that. And so far, Which I haven't heard any of that. I mean, again, I just want to iterate in the 20s and 30s. So this is after a lot of the observations that you're talking about. And like the, the, the majority opinion was your opinion, the static state universe. But static when the state. preponderance of ev uh, statics, whatever you want to call it, the universe being static. St steady but steady. since then, right, the consensus has changed in light of the evidence that has come out since that point in time, which I don't know why you don't want to discuss anything after the 1920s. Oh, well, that was the topic that. I had agreed to with AJ is why I'm frustrated because that because I wanted to talk about those specific temperatures. But when you guys keep like if I point out a problem with something with the foundations, you'll skip ahead to the 80s and then you'll skip ahead to recent stuff and you'll skip back and forth. But you'll treat it as if it's all the same thing. Well, so it's not the same thing. It's been let's, like let's the earlier models this, have been let's falsified. Talk about the temperatures then. Let's talk about the CMB. OK, let's actually like go through them. Like, look, let's look at what the temperature predictions were and which ones were right and which ones were wrong. That's what I told you I wanted to talk to you about. OK, and well, I told you I wanted to have a, a conversation, not I don't want Leo to be here. I really don't like him. Like he was not well, just it, it, it is my channel. So he was like just very saying. aggressive and hostile. Like he's not a good person. Well, that's that's a bit rude. Okay, well, tell what do you tell me what you what you want to say about the temperatures? All right, so you guys believe that the Big Bang theory is one one of the three main things that people use as evidence for the Big Bang theory is the redshift evidence, the CMB temperature prediction evidence, and usually like nucleosynthesis evidence, which all of those things have problems. But the the temperatures predicted by Big Bang models came after background temperatures were predictions were already made in the 1800s, right? It was already known that there's a background temperature and it was already predicted to be 2.7, 2.8 before the Big Bang theory. The Big Bang theorists predict something significantly hotter than that, ranging from five Kelvin all the way to like 100 Kelvin. And their whole point in that famous paper, the five Kelvin that a lot of people like to quote, 
is that they're predicting that it's going to be higher than what the other people said. So when you say, oh, well, five is close, you missed the point. One, five isn't very close in terms of predicting levels of energy. But it's it's not close because what they predicted was that it was going to be higher than the background temperature without the Big Bang Theory. Does that make sense? Like, do you, I think it's it's so contrary to your belief and so new that you're not following what, what I'm even saying. When in the 1800s did you say they predicted the CMB temperatures? Did you say 1840s? That, that prediction was made about the temperatures of the stars. And the guys, he was not talking about temperature on a cosmological scale. And he but, himself said that it wasn't going to be a very significant prediction. Like, and it, I mean, all right, it's so you're a talking different about category. Guala May or whatever the guy's name is? Yeah, yeah. I See, it's hard to pronounce. Okay, so there's a guy. Okay, so are you? what are you looking at? Wikipedia? I was looking at that earlier. Also, five is, is five a significantly bigger number than 2.7? Because I don't really think that it yeah, is. I mean, it not, is not, not, not in Kelvin, it's not. Right. It is for energy because energy, like if you if you convert temperature to energy, you do it to the fourth power. So it's way it's quite a bit more energy that is predicted. Not compared uh, to each other when you convert both the terms into energy. Yeah, if, if, the, if you're using one metric, which is Kelvin, then they are it is close, and it was a close prediction. But that isn't the prediction. There's it's five and 28 and 20 and then they change it to 30 like the one guy in one year he put out like three different completely different numbers and okay. the theory if the theory can predict anything from five kelvin all the way to 150 kelvin and they keep changing it over and over again multiple times a year over decades and decades that isn't a very specific prediction they made all of these predictions and the best you can say is well the five <laughs> the five kelvin one was kind of close <laughs> like the, the people that didn't believe in a Big Bang Theory knew the temperature b before that. How but could the they have? That, the if they didn't think there was a Big Bang, they wouldn't have thought that there would be a relic radiation left over from this hot, dense state. They wouldn't have been capable of predicting a temperature for an entity they would have suspected did not exist. What you said just makes no sense. It makes no sense to you because you assume that the background temperature has to be a relic. So you're just no, I, I don't really care what the temperature is or what it was predicted. The fact that the CMB exists bias. at all effectively proves that the Big Bang happened. So oh, yeah. no, it doesn't like because it was up. known about before the Big. It was known about decades before the Big Bang. No, it wasn't. I mean, you're just it was known, known by no, you. like, but all it actually wasn't because up, prior to the 1920s. Up, oh, hold on, Leah. All the people that Adam has brought up who quote unquote predicted this were not predicting any kind of cosmic microwave background. In their own words, they were predicting either like the background temperature of stars or of like interstellar molecules. Like none right. of these were any kind of intrinsic background temperature of the universe. They all of these scientists that are as you were talking about from the 1800s or the early 1900s, they all attributed it to them to something other than the CMB. No, it is the CMB. You guys are. Why would, guys are why would steady, Why would people who believe in the steady state predict a, that there steady would be state. background radiation? Oh my God! Are you being serious right now when you say steady state? No, why would people who just, thought the universe was static predict that there would be? Steady Less state doesn't from say the Bang. universe was static. Steady state is an expanding model. Steady you state. Know what he meant, Adam. You know expanding. what he meant. He meant static. I know, yeah. but you guys are showing your ignorance by keep saying steady state when that's a creation model, like you guys believe in. You guys are the creationists. Okay. Can I ask you about the again? Because I I will acknowledge the fact that in the '60s, when the CMB was observed, right that there was a level of controversy between, and yes, it was the steady state people at the time, but also the static people. There was controversy surrounding the, the topic about what you're saying. But ultimately, that controversy was dismissed and the consensus was formed because the CMB was measured to follow a black body curve, which is not accountable in any of the static models. That's the main point. 
No, but that's just not true that the black body is not accountable in static models because black body just is a natural occurrence from from all this stuff. Like the fact that it's microwave, the fact that it's a black body is just a consequence of the the um, temperature. So then why was the black body spectrum that was observed? Why was that piece of information sufficient to convince the entire scientific community and create the consensus that the CMB was a remnant from the Big Bang. I mean, that's the history of how it occurred. The people okay. that once believed in the steady state and the static universes changed their mind because of the black body curve of the observed right. CMB radiation. Right, right. So we already you already asked this before, but I'll go back through it. Um, one, it doesn't convince everyone. There's still people that believe in a steady state and a quasi steady state and stuff. Um, it's much more in the minority, but some people still believe that some like important scientists um it was it was it changed a lot of minds because of what penzias and wilson did it was seen as a, a confirmation of the big bang theory at first that's because that's, that's what it is yeah that's what it was well that's it, it what it was is. seen as but then they no, found that's, the that's what it is problem. they found yeah. the horizon problem like which they, has been so solved the, 60s, the horizon and, problem and then, has been solved but that's a new theory yeah, but you're the one bringing it up. So you're bringing it up to act like there's all these problems. Yeah, but they've okay, been solved. It doesn't the matter that they've been I'm solved by new theories. They've been solved. Saying. Just let me respond to what Grayson was saying. Grayson, you're asking, why did it convince so many people? At first, it was convincing. But then they started to see the issues with it. And by the 80s, these major problems of like the horizon problem stuff were recognized, which is why it's now an inflationary cosmology. Like they had to change a lot of it. But that's not a response to what I was asking specifically about the black body curve. Like that hasn't changed at all. Like that's still observable and it's unaccountable in a static universe model. There's that's like just you not, say that it's not. You say that that's not true. But I have yet to hear a single static universe model that can account for that observation. I already responded to what I I just responded to this. The the you're saying that this is you guys keep doing this. Anytime there's oh CMB, you count it as a point for its only Big Bang. You see, you see a black body. You count it only as evidence for a Big Bang. There's there's a black body curve in any of this stuff. Any of these models have black body curves. Like anyone that made a temperature prediction, that that temperature itself can indicate whether it's microwave radiation. It can indicate whether it has a black body curve. Like just the the basic like laws of thermodynamics define a thermo, a thermo, um, like an equal, a thermal equilibrium. That's a black, a black body curve. Right. And it's like, once, once you have a um, environment that interacts enough, it goes to a certain temperature and it has a black body. Like it's something that's not unique to any one theory, black body and microwave and background temperature. That is an all cosmology. Every model has that. So wait, but what isothermal, opaque, and non-reflecting object in your model emitted what is now observed as the cosmic microwave background? Grayson, is that a, does that address your question? Uh, no, not really. I don't think that you're really understanding like black body radiation or like the fact that if you could go back in time before the observation and talk to any of these physicists that were proponents of a static or steady state model, like um, they would not have black body radiation in a background temperature like that would not be a part of their model it would not form a black body curve like that is absolutely not a part of any of those models and i think that you are kind of you know I, that I think you're, true, you're saying things that you haven't looked into I, I don't think that you've looked into the black body curve of the cmb before to be quite frank well the, the thing is grayson it's fine if he okay. wants to claim that there's things in his model that can release um a radiation with a black body spectrum i just that's why i asked my question that you'll notice he ignored um so in your model what so, isothermal opaque and non-reflecting object point, emitted right? what we now measure as the cmb I already subject. asked him. I already asked him where, where he thinks that the CMB comes from, and he says it doesn't even matter. Like he doesn't have a, a model or an explanation for where it's coming from. He just thinks that it disproves the Big Bang. Am I getting that right, Adam? I'm saying in the top. Well, you guys have completely changed what this conversation is. So in the subject, you want to talk what about we the agreed, CMB. We're asking you about the CMB in the context of this. The discussion of finding issues with the big bang theory and focusing on CMB temperatures. Yeah. What, there are what none. an alternative model doesn't, it doesn't matter if we figure out an alternative model, if there's something wrong with 
the existing model. That That's what we're talking about. I if like how you're accusing that, us fine. of being creationists, but you sound exactly like people who say that we need to teach the weaknesses of evolution. You know, that's what creationists say. And that's exactly what you sound like. To teach the weaknesses of evolution. Yeah, which there are none. And you're talking about all of the problems with the Big Bang Theory. I mean, and there just aren't. There any. really aren't any, or if there they have been, <laughs> there have been solved by inventing the, new exotic matter. No, by the fact that there's overwhelming evidence that it happened because we can literally see backwards in time when we use telescopes because we're seeing light from the past. We can learn a lot just from looking out into space, and we can see the remnants of the Big Bang, which uh -huh. is the leftover radiation, which basically proves right. that it happened. Can I post a paper? Sure. Or are you guys trying to finish up here? This is why I wanted to exchange notes beforehand, because we don't have time to go through a link right now if Grayson said he has to hurry up and go. Well, you guys can continue the conversation without me, but yeah. yeah that's I why I brought Leo in here. Right, because, okay. He's like he's like a pit bull, you know. I keep him on a leash, you know. He's a, I'm just kidding. He's a pit lion. Yeah. So you guys want to continue, or are you done, or what? Well, I, I thought you were going to put something in the private chat. Yeah, continue. Oh, okay. All right. So this is actually shit. I have so I have a PDF of this download. I'll post the title real quick, and I'll find a link to the paper. <clears throat> but this explains what I was talking about. Yeah, um, I think you're a contrarian, Adam. I think that that is why you don't think that these things are true. I think that you're disagreeing okay. for the sake of disagreeing. I don't want to be here disagreeing like this. Like, I don't like that. Like, you guys have channels devoted to posturing and, and these debates. And, like, I don't really enjoy that type of conversation. So, I mean, you think it's cool to have, like, Leo come in and just, like, yell and shout and... Leo's barely that, said anything. Hit that monetize button beforehand and stuff. It's like, I don't really, yeah, I told you yeah. that multiple times before we had this conversation. This is not the type of conversation I want to have. You're goddamn right. I'm going to monetize my videos. Why wouldn't I? Yeah. So, anyways, that's the name of the paper. I'm going to monetize the shit out of the matter. This paper is from January of 1995. Uh, I also can't find any corroborating work on, on what they did. So, that's not, that doesn't look good. Leo, stop yelling. Okay, you're being extremely rude and, and vicious and, and, and you're just right, yelling. Well, um, like if you guys want to have a real conversation, we can. I just you keep saying that. Like no one's stopping you from saying the things that you want to say. Well, anytime I speak, you guys start shouting at me. <laughs> no, I'm not shouting. Okay, okay. Like you get so defensive this whole time. Like, because you brought Leo in here. I do not like Leo, and I have a negative history with him. I do not like his attitude. We've had one other exchange, yeah, and it actually you, didn't end that bad, so I don't I don't really yeah, know what you, Adam's you talking about. Out. I challenged you to have this discussion, and I asked AJ in the same question, would you want to have this discussion? You pussied out and wouldn't have it, and AJ would. He, he, I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, that was on, I believe it was Reed's Amy Newman's. Reed's. Was that Mark yeah. Reed's channel, maybe? It's one of two. But anyway, AJ, is there something I could explain quickly just for the audience? I mean, I suspect most I of you papers, probably know so. this, but. Oh, it's from 1992, oh. so don't look at it. Like, that's mentally retarded, but okay. Well, you 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 put, you didn't post the link in the chat. Type, in the just, private type, chat. just copy that and look it up. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Leo. So I wanted to explain exactly why the CMB is just effective proof that the Big Bang happened, um, and it relates to recombination. And this is also how we um, know why. This is also what explains why the universe has an abundance still of light elements. The universe is still roughly 70% hydrogen um, in terms of its baryonic mass energy density. So the reason for these two observations um, and, and the, the reason why they're expected if the Big Bang really did happen is because the Big Bang 
posits that very, very early in the universe's history, um, obviously the universe would have been significantly denser and thereby significantly hotter than it is today. In fact, there would have been a period where it would have been so hot that light would not have been capable of actually traveling. It would have been consistently scattered off of primarily, primarily the electrons and some of the the, the uh, protons that existed in the, the, the plasma, the, the opaque plasma that would have filled uh, space-time in, in the very, very early stages of the universe. However, as the universe expands, it's going to slowly cool and things are going you know, to dissipate a little bit. Energy is going to start to drop. Well, at some point, the energy is going to drop to the extent that stable, neutral atoms will be capable of forming. The electrons and the protons will be capable of binding together to form stable neutral atoms. And when this event occurs, not only will the, the most of the atoms that are formed be in the, the lightest elements, which we observe with like 75% helium or 75% hydrogen and 24% helium uh, in the very early universe. And like I said, the universe is um, still roughly 70% hydrogen. But at the same time, all of that electromagnetic radiation, now that stable neutral atoms have formed, is no longer being scattered by all of the electrons. It's now capable of free streaming, as it's called, through the vacuum of space. So if it is in fact true that the universe very, very early in its history was in a very, very hot and very, very dense state, we should see a high abundance of very light elements, and we do, and we should see at this point in time what would be very low energy microwave electromagnetic radiation that is nearly uniform and homogeneous regardless of where we look or how far out we look. And that's exactly what we see in the cosmic microwave background. Both of these confirming that the period of recombination occurred, both of them confirming definitively that it is indeed true that very, very early in its history, the universe was indeed in a very hot and very dense state from which it evolved, which is the hot Big Bang model. All right, so... Are we, I mean, are we responding to the group? Am I responding to what Leo just said or am I responding to Grayson? Grayson, do you agree with AJ? You can respond to what Leo just said. Do you guys both agree with what Leo said? Like you yeah. think that the um, nucleosynthesis and the abundance of the light elements. Yeah, we agree with what Leo said. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree that, that, that that's evidence for the Big Bang? This is the third time I've said, yes, we agree with what Leo said. Okay, but I'm saying specifically, the um because he, he, he didn't say specifically, I don't remember. I actually walked away because I can't fucking stand Leo. But um, the helium and lithium and deuterium abundance, you guys are all three citing as evidence in favor of the Big Bang, that it was a correct prediction? Yeah, yeah so one, of, if, one of many. If, if the universe has always existed, then why would there be so much hydrogen? Like, what is creating all of the hydrogen in the universe? Like, wouldn't it, wouldn't it all have been fused together in stars already? Wait, I do you want me to respond to Leo or do you want me to respond to that? Go ahead and respond to Leo. Okay. So, the, and we can get into this. This is why I wanted to focus on one thing, because we can talk about helium abundance. We can talk about lithium abundance and de deuterium. The only thing that the Big Bang Theory predicted accurately is deuterium. There's something called the lithium problem focusing on the fact that the lithium levels that were predicted at first seem right, but as they're making more and more precise measurements, the helium is wrong, the um, lithium is wrong, and the deuterium is wrong. I'm pretty sure those are the only, I mean, in the, the height, so you have hydrogen, helium, deuterium, and lithium are the four that they predict. <clears throat> hydrogen is the just the simple like hydrogen isn't, isn't very specific. It's just the, the, it's like basically primordial helium is the assumption. So the three specific predictions that they're making is helium, lithium, and deuterium, which is a form of hydrogen, correct? Yes. It's nice. Okay. Tone. So out of those three, it's only deuterium that is correct. So that's not evidence isotope. in favor of the Big Bang Theory. It's evidence falsifying that prediction of the Big Bang Theory, and you need to update the model again. 
Well, it doesn't really falsify the model. What it shows is that we weren't exactly correct with our predictions about how much lithium would would be um would be formed. But anyway, would you be capable of telling me at least two proposed solutions to that problem? I'm just interested in actually how much you've read into this. Um, to the to which problem? The lithium problem. The, 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 there yes. are proposed solutions to the lithium problem. I mean. Just, mm -hmm. There are other explanations for the amount of lithium that don't involve uh, throwing away the entire Big Bang model. No, no. That's what I'm saying is, OK, so you're counting these predictions as correct and patting yourself on the back. But then when I point out, well, actually, three of those predictions are wrong. Well, are, you are, you, that... are you aware of any of the explanations for the amount of lithium? Are you aware of any of them? Um, are you saying for, from a Big Bang theorist standpoint or from an alternative model? From Big oh, Bang. Lord. There's actually two different ways, um, at, at least two different ways. I mean, there's so a lot of cosmologists would say that it could be just that the Big Bang nucleosynthesis synthesis predictions were somewhat incorrect, or it could be that standard model predictions, like standard model of particle right. physics predictions, sure. could potentially be incorrect. Uh, I, I don't really know what the, the scoop is on which direction co cosmologists might lean. There are also some solutions that like exist beyond the standard model. The people think that like dark matter decay, I think somebody said something in supersymmetry is one way, but I don't know. Supersymmetry is probably wrong. So that doesn't, I don't think, but um, I, if I had a guess, I'd probably say it's probably some sort of like standard model predictions that are in, incorrect um, okay. with respect to just how accurate and precise our predictions, or uh, that Big Bang nucleosynthesis specifically is more complete than the standard model of particle physics. And there could be a variety of um, errors in, oh, geez, like there could be, there could be, um, oh, gee, I don't even know where to start. There's like three or four, I think, different problems um, in certain nuclear processes that could have, we could have over or under corrected for certain processes that could have produced it. There could be processes maybe we're not fully aware of that could have produced it. Um, I think there could be errors in cross-sectional analyses in the particle fit. Like there, there are solutions to this problem, but the problem yeah. isn't the problem for like Big Bang cosmology in general. It just right. means that some of the predictions were a, a little bit skewed. That happens all the yeah. time in science. I agree that it doesn't mean you have to throw out the entire thing, but it, there are they do keep doing that where they have to do an updated version of the model. So um, that's how science works. So Grayson, to respond to your question, you asked me how would you even have? What did you say? How would you even have? hydrogen in a static model well, i just want to point out that like like explanation like like if you have a prediction that doesn't come that that isn't like within the observation like there are you have to come up with explanations for what like what went wrong in the prediction and what accounts for the observable evidence and there i mean i think that you just acknowledge and you would acknowledge that there are numerous such explanations within the Lambda CDM model or like that are independent of like throwing away the Big Bang. I mean, there are lots of explanations for why these could be the case. And I haven't heard a case for like the logic behind this being a justification for disproving the Big Bang. Also, the fact that the, there are so many correct confirmed predictions of Big Bang cosmology that just means that if there is an error in the measurements of uh, deuterium or lithium, the lithium problem, then mm -hmm. that that doesn't that makes it much less of a problem because there are so many confirmed predictions. What are, so? What are some of the things that you see as confirmed predictions? Because the stuff that Leo brought up that you guys claimed you agreed with, where at this point it sounds like you're saying you agree that there are some issues with it and errors, and they are not correct predictions predictions but it might have to do with this might, you know it, need, it needs some adjusting we need to adjust to this new data that does not fit with there was a period where the it seemed to match up pretty well i can't remember the exact times on it because i was just watching a video about this where there was like i think it was maybe in the through the 90s and it was like by the early 2000s they're starting to get more precise measurements so that, um i just wanted to respond to your question about confirmed predictions. So we have the, the the distribution of galaxies, clusters of galaxies on various scales. We have the shape and the chemical composition of distant galaxies. Uh, we have the something called standard candles and the uh, the relationship between the luminosity and the distance of, of standard candles and ratios of isotopes, uh, uh, early 
isotopes, like we were talking about the light elements of hydrogen and helium, the ratios of those early light elements that were formed at the very start of the Big Bang in contrast to heavier elements that performed in the course of stars. So there are lots of confirmed predictions of the Big Bang. So if we have a problem with the calculations of lithium and it doesn't match the predictions, well, that's one error maybe, but yeah. that's not a big deal because we have all these other things that have been confirmed. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the um, abundance of the light ele uh, elements, as we established, you guys agree that there's problems with it. So that's not an example of other stuff that it does well. You cited galaxy clusters as evidence for the Big Bang Theory. Explain to me how galaxies clustering is evidence for a model that claims that galaxies are spreading apart. Because it's homogenous on large scales. Okay, so the cosmological principle, which was before the Big Bang, right? No, this is not the cosmological principle. This is observations of the homogeneity of the universe at large cosmic scales. Right, but that's yeah, it's the, the, it's the distribution of, the of galaxies. That's that's the the confirming factor. It's not just the fact that there are clusters of galaxies. It's also the distribution of galaxies and the distribution of galaxy clusters. The interesting just, thing about about it is that the distribution of galaxies largely follows the pattern remnant from the acoustic oscillations moving through the hot plasma of the very early universe um, that would have been f sort of quote unquote frozen when um, the the as, as density perturbations in the matter distribution during the period of recombination. And th those were known as baryon acoustic oscillations, providing further evidence that very early in the universe's history, it was in a very, very hot, very, very dense state from which it evolved, which again yeah. is exactly what the hot big bang model states. Yeah, the patterns in the cosmic microwave background predict the patterns of galactic clusters. Okay, so AJ, I'm not understanding how you see galaxy clusters as and you have to take into consideration there's super clusters and these huge structures that seem to contradict the the age of 13 something 14 billion years they don't that i just explained that like the, <laughs> the patterns in the cmv reflect the patterns we see in galactic clusters i mean do you acknowledge that no i'm i'm i've already said that i i see even the fact that there's not just super clusters in these larger structures but the fact that galaxies clusters to get galaxies cluster together alone contradicts the idea that galaxies don't cluster together, they spread apart. They're completely opposite claims. No. <laughs> Gravity. Like, yeah. Like, like, if things are far away, the gravity force between them is going to be weaker. They're going to expand with the expansion of space and time farther apart. But if they're closer together, the force of gravity is stronger by the inverse square law, and they will cluster together. I mean, it, it seems very straightforward and easy to understand to me. So at what point do they stop structuring? Because we have clusters, we have super clusters, we have yeah. these complexes. Based the on the fault, like the, the inverse square law of gravity. If things are too far away, they're obviously not going to cluster because the force of gravity between them is going to be too weak. I mean, that yeah, makes sense It to you, weakens right? exponentially as you get farther away. That, I don't see how you're explaining something with that, though, because what I'm saying is if you're claiming that galaxies are spreading apart or have the appearance of spreading apart because the space is spreading apart. At what 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 stage are the galaxies spreading apart? Because okay, we see them here's, clustering here's an excellent, together. Here's an excellent illustration of this, right? Every single galaxy that we see, like, is expanding away from the Milky Way, except for one, right? The one that's the very closest to us. And why is that? Because it's close enough to where its gravity is causing it to come together with the Milky Way, the Andromeda Galaxy. That's an exact illustration of what we're talking about here. If, if, if they're close enough together, the force of gravity is going to overcome the expansion. Wait, wait. Just to make sure I'm understanding, are you claiming that Andromeda is the only blue outlier we've observed? Yes. It's, it's the only galaxy that's getting closer to us. You're saying well you're, you're, you're interpreting a blue shift as velocity, and you're saying that Andromeda is the only blue outlier? It's yeah. not velocity, it's parent velocity. There is a right. difference. Right, right, right. Okay, so yeah, the Andromeda galaxy is the only galaxy that's getting closer to us. All the rest are expanding farther away. That's not what I'm asking you. It, I mean, it, it is what I'm getting answers what you're asking me, yes. Okay, so, okay, interesting. Because I, I mean, I know of other ones, but I, have, I don't have all this stuff right in front of me. I'd have to 
go through it. There's other. So if you look into blue outliers, you guys are familiar with that term? I've never heard it before. You, you, you just mean something that's blue shifted? Yeah, blue outliers are, it's considered an outlier because it's outside of the very strong trend of things being red shifted. But there are things that are pretty far out there that are still blue shifted. And it's sort of this interesting anomaly. But it's not just Andromeda that has a blue shift. There's there's these these interesting cases. That's why I'm saying, Grayson, that's why when before we got in here, I was saying it's not really, I mean, the, the, it's, they call it the Hubble law. It's a very, very strong tendency, but it's not like a, a, a law in the sense that it has to be that way. There's a lot of um, like the majority of the of what we observe is red shifted, but not everything. There's stuff out there that's blue shifted. So if it really is from expansion, why is there stuff that's blue shifted? There now, Are there any other galaxies, than, though, that are blue shifted? I think largely you see quasars. But not galaxies besides Andromeda. Um, I would have to. I mean, I have to look it up. I don't remember everything off the top of my head. Well, there's, we can look up there's, blue not, outliers there's not. And I mean, I'm interested. How can there even be a blue outlier if expand if there's expansion? Because they're from quasars. They're getting ejected from black holes. And yeah, the, the, this other galaxy is close enough to us that gravity is is counteracting the expansion because we're close enough together. Okay. On, a, on that there was scale, something also, the I, just the point, I just want to make the point real quick that the blue shift is relative to the rest of the galaxy that the quasar is in, right? So it's not like it's blue shifted as if it's coming towards us. It's just less red shifted than the rest of the host galaxy of the quasar. So, like, this is all explainable within our current understanding of physics, and it, like, makes sense. It's not, like, a, a weird... Like, oh, th this quasar is coming towards us, but the rest of the galaxy around it is going away from us. Like, Okay, so, but Grayson, if you would agree, though, then, may so maybe it is largely quasars. I, I haven't looked into blue outliers recently. Yeah, it, it is if, quasars. If there were galaxies that had a significant blue shift that were interpreted as being very distant, that would be a good question. Like, how the fuck can it do that if the universe is expanding? Yeah, which is because why we don't see the that. blue shift is again, like Grayson said, is respect to the with with respect to their rest frame. Uh, so that that's like they're blue shifted with respect to if they were stationary, around, given by the things around them, not us. So there's still a red shift from them to us as a result of the expansion of space. And ha so if the if if red shift is from the expansion itself, why isn't it an exact perfect relation? corresponding to the expansion why is it like this this range that the close ones are a little bit red shifted the further ones but it's like a range it's not just an exact um, because the expansion of space is a metric expansion of its scale measured over sufficient distances which means that the, the larger the distance between two objects the greater the redshift between them which means the further an object is from us the greater the redshift that it's going to give off but what i'm saying that is we're going to measure i should say right but what i'm saying is if you see these charts right it's not like there's a line and all the galaxies are just on that line. They're, the the ones that are lower on the line, it's like, you know, there's a there's a variation to how red shifted they are. Yes, and because they, they appear. Yeah, because they, they appear at different distances. Increasing. Yeah, Adam, do you think that there is a, any margin of error in our estimation of distances of these objects? Hold on, because maybe you guys aren't thinking of the same type of diagram I'm talking about. Um, if you look at well, you're, you're talking about a diagram with distance versus like redshift, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're just plotting you it on I axis mean. and seeing how linear it is. And you're saying that there's a certain spread, there's a margin of error. And I'm asking you, no, not a margin of error. That there's a margin of error. And by margin of error, I mean like a, a variation from a linear like line describing like a Hubble law prediction. So do you think that right. there's any margin of error in our estimation of these distances? Oh, I think there's way more than a little bit. So then wouldn't that explain what you're asking? But do you guys think there's a huge error in the distances? You, I'm guessing you don't. There's a margin of error. Okay. But you agree. Everyone here agrees that the Hubble law is not an exact precise thing. It's like there is spread. No, there's that's why most cosmologists law. actually call it the Hubble parameter now because it isn't really okay. a law. It never has been. Okay. So why do you guys... So. Grayson, it sounds like you're saying because that's a margin of error. Do you think that there is a variation in in um, the redshift distance correlation, or it's, or is it a margin of error? In other words, is there a range, 
or is it the range appears the range to be a range coming because from of the a margin of error of estimating these distances right like these di these distances are estimations based on like the cosmological ladder like they're not going to be precise they're going to come with a certain range of potential distances with the confidence interval and it's that margin of error in the in the estimation of the distances that is producing the effect that you're describing so you think it's just a margin of error i've been very clear about that as and i'm just trying to see because we're talking with three people against one here aj do you agree with that leo do you agree with that wait i'm sorry what agree with what the variation, it's not as, you said it's the Hubble, what did you say? I, like, Hubble I'm parameter? Saying, I'll, I'll explain, but, because he's saying that if you plot like a, a distance yeah. versus a redshift and like Hubble's law would, would predict like a, a straight, you know, Y equals X kind of a line, a slope. And he's saying that when you actually plot the real data, like, yes, like that, you know, that you still get like, whenever you do like an R squared, you, you'd still get that, that slope, but there's like a margin of error where they fall along this line. And I'm saying that a very likely explanation for the fact that these are not perfectly linear when they're plotted is that our, the distance, the X axis of our distance, Y axis, whatever you want to say, is an estimation of the distance that's going to contain an inherent margin of error in itself. Right. And do Leo and AJ agree with that, that it's a um, margin? I don't know. I would have to see what chart you're looking at before I could comment or speculate about what it says or doesn't say. Okay. I mean, I mean, sure, I, I agree with to conceptualize. It's easy enough to conceptualize a chart, right? Demonstrating Hubble's law. You, you, you can imagine that, right, Leo? Mm hmm. I'm sorry. I'm, I was, I'm also like half reading a paper on uh, blue outliers amongst medi intermediate redshift quasars. Okay, okay. <laughs> just, just imagine a chart demonstrating Hubble's law. One axis is distance, one axis is redshift, right? You can imagine that. Yeah. AJ, can you and when you use real life data, it's not going sure. to form a perfectly linear line, right? It's going to be, there's going to be like some variation in the, in the points. If you share your screen, I'll add it. I but uh, think so. Like, I, I can't, like, it's hard for me to picture it because that's setting an ideal scenario when he's not looking at an ideal graph. He's looking at an actual graph. Well, I would need yeah, exactly, to know what it exactly. says. He's asking, why isn't the actual graph the ideal graph? That's the question. And I'm saying I, well, I don't there's know. a margin of error in estimating the distances. I, like I said, I would need, I don't know what he's looking at. I, I don't, I, I need to see what he's looking at. Or you just described what he was looking at. You said the actual graph versus the ideal graph. He's describing the actual graph, and he's asking why is it different than the ideal. But you could, yeah, you, you could just say yes. I agree with with uh, Grayson. So what? Go ahead from that, Adam. Okay, so, you, so if you think it's a margin of error, then that doesn't, then that's different because you don't think that there really is like this range of scatter. You think that it's just because of the error. You don't think that there literally is a slight variation in redshift as it correlates to distance. You think there's an exact linear relationship, but there's a margin of error in how we measure it and not knowing what it is. Yeah, yes, that's the same with error. every that's the same with every observation in science. There's always going to be a margin of error with measurement. Yeah, so uh I think that we are going to, I'm going to wrap the stream up uh, in just like a few minutes, if that's okay with you guys, because uh, this is sort of uh, been fun, but I feel like we're sort of going nowhere with this. Uh, so yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh.